and I know that you guys love those Janus projects as much as I do, so uh, it's going to be really fun. I also have, um, those of you who follow our social media and you saw on the bead table last night or on my Insta, um, those are two things that you do want to follow, our Facebook page, beadshop.com, become a member of our Facebook group, The Bead Table, over on Facebook, and two Insta accounts, mine at beadkate and at beadshop.com, all written out in one word. Those are great ways to stay um, in touch. Um, but if you saw last night on my Insta, I was working on this tassel project that you'll see in a little bit, um, and uh, kind of a riff on what Janice did on her tassel lariat, um, her macrame lariat. Um, and so I think you're gonna really love this as well, so I'm gonna share that with you also. I just wanna make sure that we're all on and ready. Um, I can see you on Facebook, but let me make sure that I can see you on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and yes, I can, fantastic. Um, Emily is over moderating on YouTube, and Gita, of course, as always, is moderating on our Facebook page, um, and she's moderating as beadshop.com. So it's great to have all of you guys here. Um, I know it's, uh, it's so fun to spend these Wednesdays and Fridays with you guys, and it's great to see all of you guys. I can see everybody jumping on and saying hello, which is great. Um, I uh, did want to mention, though, sometimes I get some feedback um, from viewers that's like, Kate, oh my gosh, there's so much chitter chat at the beginning. How do I get to the actual project that you guys are doing? So uh, what you can do if uh, you've come here and you haven't watched it live and you want to get right to the project we're making, um, go to our website, beadshop.com. Go to the project. There's a couple of ways that you can find this. You can either go to our projects page um, and um, find the project in the drop down menu, or you can go to our bead shop live section on that page and you'll see individual photos of each of our bead shop um, live projects all in chronological order. Then once you click on that project, click on the episode notes. That is your hand in hand um, document, I guess, or handout that goes with this class. Drea in our customer happiness department, and she always makes our customers happy, which is awesome. Um, she compiles all of the info from these broadcasts into one fantastic document that you can either download as a PDF or print it out. Um, and that will walk you through the steps and also have the timestamps for each kind of, I don't know, big, technique that I do. So if you're here to have the conviviality of the chat and stuff, that's awesome. And I love that part. But if you want to get right to the project, download those episode notes and you'll be in good shape there. So Drea does a wonderful thing. Um, I love it that that uh, you guys are talking about having snacks. I just saw uh, Michelle on our Facebook page. Does that mean you brought snacks? She's a plant replying to Faye. So what is, what is, oh, there we go. Cause Faye, you are in the grocery store parking lot. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I love that you guys are watching both on our Facebook uh, page and on our YouTube channel. YouTube, I think is great um, because I know a lot of you watch it on YouTube and a lot of you I know have like smart TVs or whatever um, uh, that have the apps on them. So you can use your um, your YouTube app on your TV. And I'm live, so huge. That's how I watch my YouTube videos. I watch a lot of how-to videos as well. Um, and so I like to watch them on my TV also. So it's great. It's great to have all of y'all here. It's great. We've got some viewers from the UK, from South Africa, from Florida. I love it from our neighbors to the north in Canada, and of course, our Drea over um, in Denmark. It's fantastic. Well, it's great. It's so great to have you all here from all over the world. And, you know, one of our goals here at beadshop.com is to bring creativity to the bead table and bring it to you worldwide, which is great. Um, I did want to mention. Um, because uh, we're having some fun stuff happening here this weekend. Emily is coming down, she's driving down, uh, and will be here for 
uh, Free Tip Friday with me on Friday, and she has what I think is the ultimate summer bracelet project. It's super fast, super easy. I think you guys are going to love it. So she's going to be here with me on Free Tip Friday this Friday. Then Emily and I are going to be here, right here in the office in our studio from 11 to 3 on Saturday. And that date, just so uh, if you're watching it later, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, June 15th, and it's going to be from 10 to 3. Emily and I will also be popping in periodically to do a couple of live broadcasts from the studio. We're going to have a make and take. Um, so those of you who are joining us, if you want to do the make and take, that would be awesome. You just pay a small fee for that. But the studio is free. It's open. You can come in. You can see stuff. You can chat with Emily and I. We'll have some class samples um, for more of our live and in-person classes that are coming, as well as some more information about our online classes, which is going to be great. So if you're going to be around in the San Francisco Bay Area, we'd love to have you. And there's more information um, on our homepage um, on our website at beadshop.com. Hey, Brandwin, I am tumbling some things in the tumbler, and it's kind of loud. Do you want to just unplug it? Okay. I am actually, I'll tell you, I am tumbling some metal beads as we speak, and that tumbler is a little loud. I can hear it. So we'll go ahead and unplug it, and we'll just have to, um, we'll just have to uh, tumble them a little bit later. There we go. All righty, I'm just checking. Emily, I'm not seeing all of your comments come through, but I just want to make sure. There we go. I've got you. Now you're covered. I clicked you over to moderator status, so everything should be okay. All right. So, excellent. Michelle, you're hopping on your private jet. You'll be there on Saturday. Fantastic. We'll go to a fancy dinner afterwards. Perfect. All righty. All right. Well, let's... Um, let's uh, jump in to uh, the projects and see what we've got going on. We've got some brand new um, beautiful pieces um, from Dakota Stones that I'll be sharing with you today. And then I want you to take an up close and personal look at the Lariat. Now if you haven't gone on beadshop.com already, go to the project. It's under If you go to projects, click on Lariats. All of the many Lariats that I've done are on that project page. Um, but the Macrame Lariat is all the way at the first position number one. Click on it and then scroll down and you're gonna see Janice's really fantastic notes um, that she drew up. And so while that's going, we'll have Brandwin move the camera. I'm gonna see if I can actually print those notes out um, while we're doing that. It's something I actually didn't do beforehand. Um, and But her photo is really gorgeous. If I can't print it out, I will um, just show it to you here. But I think, I think, I think I can get it. Let me see. And Chris is so good when he sees that I've printed something. He usually runs it right in from his desk. So let's see if I can make that happen. Um, there we go. Look at that, Brandwin. And look at that. See how we clean? You can see a little, um, you can see a little bit of our floor there, but you can also see how we cleaned up our cords or leads, as we learned earlier. That's what you call them in the UK. So look at us getting more professional by the second, right? Got it, Brandwin? I am now doing the fine nice. tuning. The fine tuning. Perfect. And I think this is printing. Okay, great. Alrighty. Good one. There we go. All right, looks great. Okay, We're getting there. I made it look worse. Okay. Okay, so, ooh, ooh. Why is this? Here, lift it up a little bit, and let's get it a little more front and center. There we go. Alrighty. Is that a little too low or a little, a little too low? Okay. Hmm. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Alrighty. So, there, 
And so that will pause for waiting, you guys. But we're going to jump in and see what we've got. Go this way? Way up. Okay. Can I can I move this towards me? You can try. It'll it just gets that angle going that you were concerned about. Let's see here. I'll show you what. There we go. Let's move it. There we go. A little bit more in my eye range. All right. Thanks, you guys, for hanging in there. And Chris, right on cue. Look at that. You're the best. Thank you. Okay. All right. I will try and stay in frame for you guys today, too. So uh, so this is what we've got. So let me um, put on my glasses here. And so you can see, this is what I just printed out from our uh, page, from our... Um, our project page over on bead shop and I love that um, Janice does these photos for you guys and does this kind of editorial for you and so you can find this over as I said over at beadshop.com on uh, the project page okay and so Janice called this lariat project the watch over lariat and she's done a lot of really cool stuff with this. Not only are we using, and I'm gonna show you all these in a few, um, these new Z agate beads um, from Dakota Stones, but she has incorporated some of the other pieces or the other techniques um, that we've used in some other projects. I know what I would in Brandwin while I'm talking about this, on the wall, Janice's homecoming necklace. You know, the one that has these, it was from her kit. Okay. It should be right there if you would grab it. Poor Brandwin, she's like, what else do you want me to get today? Yeah. Um, but it takes a village. Um, so Janice has not only done this kind of fun tassels that we did on her malas, um, she uh, also did this Bollywood style um, with the macrame. And then this kind of weaving in and out that I did on my, um, my big piece that I did with her homecoming pieces. And then she just laddered. And I really think that the um, laddering, the 11 aught seed beads, these Picasso, this is the um, Picasso brown tan matte seed bead. I think it's really super effective. So let me show you. Um, I'm going to move my piece out of the way because we're going to look at that in a second. But I want to bring these Dakota stones and also Janice's necklace. Look at that lusciousness, just that pile of lusciousness. And then Janice's necklace here and then the lariat. You guys remember this one. This was a kit that JP did a while back. We did it uh, sometime last year, I think. And this one is called homecoming and the homecoming piece that she did um, these agate barrels were kind of the the start the kind of the the genesis of this whole project and then she again she used some Ceylon and stuff in here and some of the sand cast um, uh, little discs and stuff here and the swirl button and a lot of macrame it's really cool and you can go back and you can watch that episode and we have it also on our um, on our website uh, as well is the barrel bead Paulette saying the barrel beads out of stock already is it is it really we had plenty you guys are just just awesome but we will, if they're out of stock, you guys. No, we have them, the large barrel. They are in stock, don't scare me like that. We do have them, the, and it's this one, the Tierra Agate Large Barrel, that's this one, it's right here. Um, and then, um, and it may be because of, um, yeah, they're all there. And then let me look at the Z bead too. This one is also a great one to use in it. This is the one that's out of stock, and we'll get some more of those guys in for you no problem these guys are awesome um, I I love these I love them love them um, but these guys are in but these hang tight you guys because I believe um, we'll be able to get those back in stock uh, in no time at all so I love these guys here and then these uh, the seed beads and stuff that we've got on going on are great 
So let me show you uh, Janice's other piece that she did for today. I'm going to put that there. And I want you guys to be able to take a look at that one. And let me put it next to this guy that Janice has here. And you can see how gorgeous. And how you can see that it's kind of like a theme that we're, that, you know, if Janice was doing a collection, um, these you would be able to tell um, that they all went together in the collection, right? So I think, um, you know, kind of working in a color way or different ways um, are a great way to start to kind of think about pulling a collection together. And you can see, you know, there's colors and stuff repeating in here. Um, bear with me here just a second. And let's take a look. I'm going to move these guys over. We also have, these are new, the Tara, the Tara Agate um, Donuts and these barrels here. And then we've also got them in the 6, 8, and 10 millimeter. Aren't those gorgeous? I just love them. I love them, love them. And these would look great. These barrels, I think, would look great um, as a substitute for these other ones. These long ones, we're doing this for the first time. We're selling these by the strand um, because we thought, um, I don't know, we thought that you might like to choose, you know, because there's such a variation on the strand that, you know, like with the vintage finds, when you guys order the vintage finds, we're like, oh, and you want green, or you want this, or we want that. So we thought, you know what, we're gonna make it easy on ourselves and sell them by the strand. And it seems that you guys really, really like them. Um, and we got some shout outs. You guys are all shouting out for the team when you get your vintage finds. That's awesome. Uh, let me, uh, I'll measure them. It looks like Nancy has a question about how long they are. And it should say on, the site, but they're about an inch and a half or a little under 40 millimeters. So, um, there we go. So it's a nice, um, there we go, thanks. Um, so it's just a nice size uh, and it's kind of chunky. And so you can use them all together like I would, or you can use them like Janice did in her homecoming piece, which is this one right here, which is nice. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Um, Kayla, if you're still watching, I just sent you an email. <laughs> so go ahead and check that email if you would, real quick. Um, and it shouldn't take long. You got, oh, and you're saying how long to get in stock. Nancy, it shouldn't be long at all. Let me, uh, we're gonna try our, I'm gonna try and teach you something and get some new, um, yep, see, she's so good. Look at that. And I think she just, let me reply. Look at how yep. we can, look at how we got a gotcha at, right on. <laughs> look at how uh, the magic of, of uh, through the magic of television or whatever. It's awesome. You guys are so good. You're so good. Um, okay, so let's get to my piece here. Let's get to the learning. Um, and then I will have those back in stock before the end of the broadcast. So hang tight, you guys. Um, where is my, uh, where's my tassel? Where's my tassel? Let me get all of this stuff to the side. Oh, I wanted to show you these too. We have, and we have some barrels coming in that are gonna match these and they're coming in, they're on order. Wait till you see the barrels that match these. But these six millimeter blue, what we're calling the blue eye bead, is so gorge, isn't it just gorgeous? And um, if you guys remember way back, um, our Grace, who is no longer with us, who has moved on to uh, new pastures, uh, but when Gracie went to Turkey, you can still watch her um, broadcast from Turkey over on our website. We had a giveaway. She brought back these really cool um, kind of blue eye Lucky Charm beads, which were just so gorgeous. 
Um, she, uh, you guys really loved them. Well, these are kind of reminiscent of those. And the blue, and I think you can see it pretty well on camera, the blue is just gorgeous. Now, I love eyes, and I make, I have some lamp worked eyes that I get um, when I go down to Mexico, and I have different things. I love them. I just love eyes and eye symbols. Some of the eyes freak people out. I know, you're like, uh, that's freaky. But some of you who love them will love these as well. And I'm going to use these um, in uh, on my Friday project with, um, with, uh, with Emily, which is great. I just, I... I adore them. And um, uh, Gita is putting up the YouTube channel, the YouTube link uh, for Grace in the Markets, which is awesome. So bear with me here, you guys. I'm just going to put those beads back in stock right now as you're gazing on those. So thanks for, thanks for bearing with me here. Bam, done and done. Okay, great. I love this. Uh, so my piece that I did, let's get to it. I was super inspired by Janice's work here on her tassel. And if you remember when she was here earlier this year, she did a, um, on her mala, we made some tassels. And tassels, as my mom knows, my mom is watching uh, today, uh, my mom knows that tassels are kind of my spirit animal. I love tassels. I've always loved tassels. When I was a little girl, I, we had like an ottoman that had tassels hanging from it, and I would look at those all the time. I love them so much. Um, and so making tassels to me is really super fun. So. I started yesterday, I was working on this piece, and so I thought I would take start with Janice's tassel and kind of take it to the max. So I wanna show you this, and then I'm gonna walk through the different steps that she did here and how I might adapt it to this piece. Now this tassel that I made, this could be a standalone. I could um, put it on my, just hang it from like my armoire or you know, have it hanging in my house as a decorative element, which I do, I have tassels like that at home. Um, and I love how I got to put armoire in there. It was, that was a good one. Um, but I really think that it's a fun and quick project, especially if you, I don't know, maybe you're making a gift for someone that maybe doesn't wear jewelry but a tassel is so delightful. I love it. Oh, and Gita just uh, linked, you know, if you want to laugh, my mom and I um, did a tassel making um, free tip Friday when we were at our quilt retreat. And my mom and I are always hilarious, if I do say so myself, on the YouTube. So Gita just linked it there. You can see my mom and I make tassels. Um, after the broadcast. So Sherry, thanks for that leading question. The thread uh, that I used for the tassel is the same thread that Janice used in the project. So what Janice used over here, and I'll show you, she used, um, we have a couple of different Ceylons, and we used the Ceylon in regular uh, for this, though you could use tough cord, you could use CKC, Chinese knotting cord, doesn't, doesn't really matter. All of those will work, okay? But what Janice used in the project, this color here, this is um, the Celadon, I believe. Yep, the Celadon. And then we used, now we have C, um, Ceylon in so many colors, and it's easy to kind of get confused about what we've used and what we haven't. So can you see on this tassel right here how there's green at the bottom? That is actually, in, uh, and so I took my cue from that, the fern um, Ceylon. But what Janice did, so she, wire, uh, she silk wrapped one with the green, but over here she continued to use the Celadon. And so she did the silk wrapping with that. I am using, in the regular Ceylon, we're using um, the brown regular Ceylon. You can use brown 
or chocolate or you know whatever whatever brown color you like that works for you she also you guys lathered with the um ceylon and it's actually not the lathering it's actually the infinity stitch let me get that here and she used the chocolate now if you already have thread at home you could do you know what i would use my go-to which is the pebble um hana thread and i used the pebble hana i thought i had it here no i thought it was in the box I mean, I didn't see one. I didn't go grab one uh yeah i know i brought it it might be out on the table um but the hana um i've used and you'll see it, a little peek of it there and i'll show you how i use that but again whatever cords um you want um to use they'll all work and but i really like this laddering or this infinity stitching with the um chocolate the micro okay and so, um, and yeah, Maureen, you don't have to ladder uh, at all. You know, you can just string for sure. You can adapt this however you want it. And so here is the pebble, uh, uh, Hana in pebble. And this is the one, I'll just flash it here. This is the one that I use in my Kate's favorite. I use this all the time, I love it. So, um, so with the tassel, I'm gonna start by making the tassel, okay? And let me scoot all of this over. And so what I do, um, and so for the infinity stitch, we have an excellent Leslie saying, I can't remember how to do infinity stitch. I'll show you also before we, um, uh, before we part ways today. But um, I will also tell you, we do have a refresher on it um, on our website. If you go to our skill builders, and you um, scroll down a little bit to our, um, uh, I guess it's in, in Skill Builders, you'll scroll down to the Infinity Stitch Skill Builder and you can, um, and you can uh, find it there. But I promise I will go over it. So I made, I got for my tassel, okay, I got a manila, little manila folder and I cut it up to about the length, and it's just shy of five inches. It's about five and seven eighths of an inch here, or four and seven eighths rather of an inch here, but you can go all the way to five. That would be fine, no big deal. And then we're going to wrap, okay? And then, Oh, and Ellen's saying, Kate, don't throw anything at me, but are you sure that tassel is made with Ceylon? I am sure, and you're going to see what Ellen is observing. It's great. The texture looks something else, like CKC or something. Well, Ellen, you have such sharp eyes. I'm going to show you how I make the texture look so different. I can't get anything by you guys at all, can I? So see how I've made it into a little folder, and I have put a little cut here in the bottom. And I'm kind of closing that up so that'll hold my tassel here, okay? And I'm going to wrap. You guys, you're so funny. You are, I, I cannot put anything past you. I'm going to show you how I make it so nicely. So I'm going to wrap. Oh, Leanne, you're, you're, you're telling my, my guests. That's right. I'm going to show you how I use the flat iron to flatten it out. So I'm going to wrap and wrap. And so remember when we're making our tassel, how half of the tassel, if I'm wrapping it around, half the tassel is on the front, half the tassel is on the back. Okay, so if we want kind of a luscious tassel like this, we need only about this much wrapping on the front. So you can kind of kind of judge it that way. I'm going to keep going. Let me pull that up because it's making too much noise. And I'm going to wrap and wrap. As you wrap, the manila folder gets a little, you know, gets a little um, warped, but that's okay. Um, that's why I made the tassel kind of long, so you have enough to kind of take off at the end when, as Janice likes to say, give it a haircut. Okay. So I like I like I like the feeling of this. Maybe I'm going to give it maybe five more wraps. 
And am I counting? No. Are you going to count? Oh, for God's sakes, I hope not. And just kind of look at it and see what you like. There we go. That looks good to me. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut. For this, for cutting these threads, you need some really good scissors. And I brought in my really good fabric scissors. And I'll tell you a little secret. See how on these scissors, how it says, look at this cut kimono cord only. I love you guys so much that I brought in my good fabric scissors so when we cut your kimono cord it's perfect. <laughs> so these uh, are living here to cut our kimono cord but they're also here to cut these nice threads like this. So I'm going to my little end that I've cut it's right down here. Can you see that? So it's going to live there and I'm going to put this aside for just a second. Now here on the Larry on the tassel that I made, can you see how there is leather running through it? Now, what Janice did with her piece, and I thought it was fantastic, she used the 0.5 millimeter, and she used the 0.5 millimeter in Distress Brown. I went to our scrap bin and got some um, leather, and I think what I'm using here is. Um, distressed mahogany maybe but any of the distressed browns you guys will work just fine and Janice what she used to ladder is the micro the Ceylon in micro which works really well which is very nice um, but again you could use any of your favorite laddering threads so um, and you can see she's come down here the tassel uh, is tied onto here and then it comes up we put she's put on a matubo made a couple of knots she's put on the big uh, Z bead she's knotted up here and then away she goes so I would use for Janice's lariat I would use our leather comes in four yard pieces I would just use that whole four yards and start here at one end and just choose an end and just start just begin for me, since this is a tassel, I've just used a scrap of leather, and maybe this is a yard about, right? So I uh, will come in. Now I need to make the top of the tassel. So I'm going to get my leather cord, and I'm going to come in underneath, and I'm going to pull this down. So see how it's um, kind of gathering up everything there and then I want you to notice what I did here see what's peeking I've got something peeking what a surprise what's peeking there it's a shadow bead but you can have anything peek there that you want the shadow though um, as you can see you know I wear it every day in my Kate's favorite but you can see in that shadow bead look at the hole size on that sucker right it's really big so you can most of the time get two strands of this 0.5 millimeter leather through that shadow what I'm doing is I'm cutting at a really nice angle both of the ends of my cord and so I'm gonna come in I'm gonna string it through there's one 0.5 mil and then let me get the other one going through If it doesn't go through, this, this piece of cord is a little soft, so I'm going to get the stiffer cord here, and I bet that'll go through. Yep, there it goes. So you can see two of the 0.5 millimeter strands of leather goes through that shadow. Now, I slide that shadow all the way down, because I don't know if you remember on our mala show but when we went to cut take the tassel off and um, wrap the mala we, I didn't really secure it before I did it like I usually would and so it got kind of unruly so this is kind of the way to kind of keep your cords in um, in check as you're doing this so see it's nice and tight here now I can take out my um, thread here but not before I prep I'm going to prepare my, uh, I, I wrap this with the green, but if you have the celadon, we could wrap it with the celadon or the brown or whatever worked for you. 
But I'm going to cut a piece for silk wrapping. And I know you're saying, Kate, how much did you use? I will measure it as we speak. Six, 12, about 18, about half a yard is what I used for this. So I have this at the ready. I'll take my little card out here. And that's why I like using the manila folder or something that, um, that you can kind of manipulate to pull out. If you were using cardboard that was a little stiff, if you wrap it too, uh, too tightly, it's hard to pull out of your tassel. So you can see I've got all of this and see how it, it really is kind of tamed or held together by this shadow over here. So I'm really going to pull that shadow down so it's nice and tight. So now I'm not even going to cut this yet. I'm going to smooth everything down with my hands and I'm going to silk wrap. Now the way that I silk wrap a tassel, and you've seen me silk wrap before again and again, but I'll go over it here. I'm going to go about one third of the thread to about two thirds of the thread over here. I'm going to lay that loop down across my tassel, put my thumb over the top. I like to start my wrap at where the tassel top is going to be so I know how long this section right here is going to be. Okay, So I get my long thread and I wrap around everything. Wrap around and wrap around like this. And then, whoops, get my fingers in there. Let me grab this one more time. There we go. And if this is giving you a little bit of trouble holding it together, use, um, I use these clips so much. There we go. And I can also clip, I know I have another clip here somewhere. them out. Oh, thanks, Bear. Janice did a wonderful, um, a really wonderful demo on the silk wrapping the last time she was here. There we go. This kind of helps hold everything together too, but usually I just kind of hold it in my hand. Now, <clears throat> let me get this on. Yes, the clampers, the good old clampers. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap. And I'm going to wrap over. I'll move my finger in just a second so you can see what I'm doing. Just let me initiate the wrap and you can see. There we go. Can you see how there's the loop under my finger? Here's my wrapping nice and tight, even and crisp. And we want it to be nice and snug, nice and firm. This is when I switch hands here because the silk wrap must be even and tight, but not so tight that the um, that you're not going to be able to pull that loop up and underneath it. So I don't know, make the neck of the tassel, I guess we could call this, um, as long as you'd like it. This is about, I don't know, about a half an inch, a little shy, maybe about, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch maybe. I'll go maybe one more. Now all I do with that end is I put it through that loop of the green. See that there? Like it's going the same way. Now back to where we started on this side. We pull that because we don't want any little extra. There we go. I'm going to put my thumb on it. Now see here I'm going to pull this original thread that I wrapped over and see how it's pulling that loop down pull, 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 and underneath, right? And then I pull them both. And then we're good to go. Look at that, how nice it looks. Now I'm going to unclip everything, and I'm going to use my beloved thread burner to, um, to burn uh, those away. Um, and you did use a regular size shadow. I did. It's yes. the regular shadow, um, and I really, um, I really, 
I really like them for this kind of thing. You could also silk wrap up here and stuff too, but it doesn't, you know, whatever works for you. But, you know, if I, there's a shadow around, I'm going to use it. Here's the thread burner. Now we can clip it, we can glue it, but this is really tight. I rarely glue my silk wraps. I'm going to come in, I'm going to put that end through my thread burner. I'm going to be really careful about where I'm touching the hot tip of this thread burner. I only want to get rid of that bottom cord. There we go. And I'm just going to dip it right here. The thread burner is awesome. I love it, and you've seen me use it. Um, we got, we used to carry the thread burners here at Bead Shop, and we carried kind of um, an inexpensive one, I guess, is what you could say. And we had some issues with them lasting uh, for some of you. And uh, so we decided to bring them back, but we brought back a really um, higher end one. So they are a little spendy. They're a little more than what you might find the inexpensive ones uh, be on just online. Um, but it's really a, um, a high quality thing. And you can see I put my name on mine so no one takes it. Um, but it should last with care and making sure that you have the lid on it. It should last you. We also carry the replacement tips. I think we might be out of the replacement tips, but we've got more coming. And you shouldn't need a replacement tip for a while. It should be, um, if you treat it right, um, I've honestly never replaced the tips on my thread burners. Um, but they could wear out if you use it a lot. The tip, what happens is, because the tip is such a, a small wire, you can see that tip may eventually break, and so that's why you'd have to replace it, okay? So, uh, so now, look at our tassel. It looks like this, right? It looks all kind of curly and not like our fancy, um, our fancy one that's right here. So some of you spied what it was I was going to do, um, and that is, um, use the hair straightener on it, right? Works for me, works for my hair, so it'll work with this. Um, we learned, I think it was last year at our bead retreat, um, our, one of our retreaters, Alice, brought her hair straightener and used it to tame her CK, her, her Ceylon, and it was just fantastic and I've been doing that ever since. And you can see, I've just put my scissors in the middle of that loop and started to clip things, and I'm gonna clip these here. If you don't have good scissors for this step, it can be a little frustrating. So go get your good um, fabric scissors from wherever you hide them from your kids or your partner or, I don't know, your pets or whatever, um, and, uh, and use them to cut. Um, the end of this. So I'm going to bring all of this together and I'm going to give it a nice even cut across. And again, that's why I make this tassel kind of long. So I've got plenty of room to trim. And you want to try and get it as straight across as you can, not like me when I cut my own bangs in the mirror. Okay? Because I, I do ask my hairdresser. She's like, what have you been doing? I'm like, well, I've been using the kitchen shears to cut my bangs. All right, so uh, so see this? So it still looks like this, but it's even. So I'm going to get the hair straightener, and I've got it right here. This is just mine that I've had forever, right? And uh, you can buy, I've seen them online, and you can buy um, little mini ones that uh, are tiny. And they're really kind of fun. Look at that. See how, look at that. It's just so nice and straight. And then you can kind of, the sizing kind of all kind of sticks together a little bit when you do it. But all you have to do is kind of open it up a bit. But look at that. Just like, look at that. Just like your hair. It's perfect. All right. And Kim Crawford saying she feels good about her Zeron thread snips. 
Yeah, you know, her the thread snips actually work really well also. I sometimes need like a longer cut, so that's when I'll get my scissors. And now you can also see if you need to come in and retrim the bottom, because now this is nice and straight, which I will do. I'll come in and I'm gonna give it one more cut. There we go. So it's pretty straight across. There we go. That looks pretty good, I think, right? And I don't know, Sherry's asking if you could use an iron to do the same. I, you know what? I don't know why you couldn't. Um, I, I haven't. Um, but on short little tassels like this, um, an iron might be a little um, might be a little difficult. You can see that Janice has not um, straightened hers out, so I'm going to take the liberty of giving them a little touch of um, hair straightener and see I'm just doing that and then I'll do it with these guys here and it'll kind of calm those those strands down there we go looks good I think it is it is like magic isn't it and then you know do your tassels and then do your hair I don't know it's kind of fun but the little hair straighteners that you find online I really do need to get one I just I just haven't um, they're just small and compact so it's pretty cool and you can see Janice kind of left her tassels a little um, I'm going to cut that long one but they don't have to be perfectly straight across they can be a little more organic as well so now that we've created our tassel and it's a little bit easier for you guys to see this now that it's big um, and I'll put Janice's right next to it here so you can see this here um, what Janice did next is she used the Matubo, and I want to show you the Matubo for this. Here's the Matubos, and the Matubo is like a large seed bead, essentially. Um, the large, um, it's a what we call a about a two watt, I think, um, and the whole size is nice and large, and the whole size will accommodate two strands of um, of the um, 0.5 millimeter leather. And so uh, I'll show you how those go on. Let me get back the feed here. I kind of missed you. Ellen, you have a fine super pixie short haircut. I bet it's super cute. I've always wanted to pixie my hair. I did. I did uh, at the end of high school. I had a super short pixie. It was pretty cute. I like it. I think that's darling. See how that Matubo goes through those two? Looks awesome. You could, again, with this Matubo, you could Bollywood with that sucker, right? The flat macrame. You could use these instead of these four aughts. It would look really cute, right? It would look really good. So you can, so with the tassel, with the end, just, I don't know, just make it up. Just see what you like. Janice tied a knot there on mine. I didn't tie a knot. What I did was I got one of our donuts um, and I, um, I used that to kind of pull it together. There's one wayward. Can you see that? There's one wayward one. I'm going to pull it up so I can see which one it is. It's this one. I'm going to see if I can grab it. Come on. I think that's the one. And pull it down. So you can neat and think, no, nah, that's not it. Let me just see. So you can see that the, um, there it is. You can see that the uh, silk wrap is tight. There we go. But it's not so tight that you can't adjust these threads. That looks a little bit better. And you can come in and um, kind of detail this top if you need to. So the donut, you can see Janice used the donut here in the lariat right here. She also used it in her homecoming project, which is here. Okay. I like to also use it as a big hole bead. So I'm going to grab one. There it is. And again, it'll take the two strands. If you don't have two hole or big hole beads in your stash, um, you really need to grab some because big hole beads come in so handy when you're doing things like this, when you need to hold a bunch of cords together. So here's this one, okay, the, the, um, 
the donut. So now what Janice did next was she added the barrel. Now I could, look at how beautiful the agate barrel would look on this too. It would look just gorgeous, this Terra agate. But since I already opened these guys, I think I'm going to grab one of these and put it on. Now there's a variation in size and color on these agate beads and that's just how they are. Okay, so that's just how they are. So you'll you'll just get them and just find the ones you want and find the color order and just put them on. So again, the two strands of that 0.5 millimeter go right through there. See that? So there's this. So we're shaping up with our tassel. Now what JP did here was she tied another knot and then she started to macrame. So I'm going to show you what I did on mine because it was um, it was uh, very similar, but I thought I would use it as the bail, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Not the bezel, but the bail. So can you see that? I'm going to set that next to it. So I've come up, I've put the donut, I added a Matubo, so I think I'm going to add a Matubo to the other side as well. Does it need to come up? Yep, there we go. So you can kind of see how those look. Now the the tassel that I did that's all the way over here on the left, um, you can see I did the macrame around the top. And it's fun having a tassel um, because with this kind of large of a bale on it, because you can kind of go back and forth, put it on something, take it off, so it's a nice kind of convertible piece to wear. Like you could just make a bunch and then um, just slide it on and off of, you know, different necklaces. So that's what I'm going to do here. But the way that Janice did this was she, she tied knots. I'm using beads to hold it together. Um, and let me add a few more beads to the top of that. Let me do this and put it through. I'm going to use a Matubo. Yes, that is correct. Ellen is noticing that the stripes, those four millimeter, or four aught rather, aged brown stripe Picasso check seed beads. And you guys, we have a good supply of them, but when they're gone, these are gone. They, these I cannot get back in. And so I use them on, on the bale that I made here. And it's kind of fun. You know, it's a little quirky looking, but I think it's good. So that's what I used on this. So I'm going to do this, and then I guess I'll finish it. I'll make it symmetrical. I'll get a big shadow and do this. Okay. And put it on. There we go. And then I slide this on. So now, so where our paths didn't merge was I made the bale, came around. Now you don't even have to macrame that. You could just macrame it plain or whatever and bring it around and there you go. You're set to go with that, okay? So the way that I set it up, and it's a little, I wanna share this with you because it's a little, um, unwieldy when I do this. So I want to kind of show you how I pull this all together to get this on. So uh, let me get my board. Let me clear the decks for a second here. And I have my board here up at the top and here's the tassel I've made. And so my goal is to either start my macrame for the big um, necklace or to start the macrame for the bale on my um, tassel. So I'm gonna get some Ceylon, and Janice used the Celadon, but since I have the fern in front of me, I'm gonna use the fern, okay? And I love, fern is one of my neutrals for this, but whatever Ceylon color you dig, just do it, right? Uh, so I start with my tray up at the top, and I lay my tassel next to the top of that, and I clip it on. Okay, because I need my 
my cord to be coming towards me for my macrame. So you can see the clip is on there, It's nothing's getting hurt. I could even just clip a couple on there so it's nice and, and secure and tight, right? Kind of like Drea did the other day with her button when she was doing the herringbone thing. She just clipped her button right to the board. This is a nice way to do it too. Then I'm gonna come all the way to the other side here. If my leather was longer, I'd wrap it several times or however I needed it to be. But we have a great video on how to attach your, your um, board, um, your cord to the board uh, as well. So I'm gonna put this on and then um, I'm gonna bring this back here like this and now I'm ready to go. So I have my um, fern, fern, and Kim's asking if you'd like the in multiples. Yeah, the serpentine donuts are jade rings in multiples. You know what, Kim? I think we used to carry them that way, honestly. And I think that people asked if they could just buy them individually, so we went to individual. Um, but we could certainly entertain that thought as well. Clip there. Um, so uh, I know because I use those like they're water, you know, I use them all the time. You can see with my fern, I'm just using my Ceylon um, little spool to put it under my threads here so it's nice and tight. And I'm just going to flat macrame, right? No, no big deal. No harm, no foul. I'm just going to come in and start. So you've seen me do this about a billion times, but I'll do this real quick. I'm going to come in. I'm going to start on my Q side. I've made a loop for the Q, comes over the leather, then the other side here that's going to eventually be on the opposite, the P side. I come over the thread, under the leather, and back up and through the loop. And you can see how the knot is starting in the front and the loop is going around on the back. And what I want to do is I'm going to leave a space. Now, if you're Janice and you're making this lariat the whole way, I'm going to, let me get this so it's in the right, it's positioned correctly. I'm just going to start my macrame and macrame, macrame, macrame. Okay. Um, but if I'm doing a loop, can you see this here? I actually start, I leave a space so when I've macrameed, 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 and I come back around, I have a bare space to macrame around, okay? And this is the regular Ceylon that I'm using, but you could, if you wanted everything scaled down just slightly to be a slightly finer look, you could use fine Ceylon. You could also use CKC or Chinese knotting cord, especially in the 0.4 millimeter. Uh, I think you'd love it. Um, you guys are, I'm gonna tell you a little secret here. I am working on a macrame project to get you guys all prepped for Brittany. She's gonna be here in August doing a macrame. So I'm kind of doing a simple macrame project for you guys um, that has um, the 0.4 uh, Chinese knotting cord that I think you're gonna love and it's gonna debut at the end of the month so you'll see that. Uh, so can you see how I'm not adding beads at all yet? I'm gonna add some beads now so you guys can see it. I just wanted to establish this and get some momentum here. And you are using regular Ceylon? Yeah, regular Ceylon, yeah. Yeah, I saw that question I, that Joanne had and we confirmed it with that okay. or you could use the micro um, not the micro, but the fine as well. You could also use tough cord, you know, anything that works for you. But the regular Ceylon, especially for this, is kind of my go-to. I'm going to do three of what we call these Bollywood stitches, but it's really just a beaded flat square knot. Um, sometimes the holes are good, but there was that one where the hole wasn't. So I'm just going to put three on. This is going to be kind of uh, a, a quick one. All right. And then I'm going to put three on this side. Now, when Brittany was here and we did that fun river walk um, project, uh, you saw she, and if you didn't watch, if you haven't watched that um, episode, that B 
Beach Shop Live episode. I don't know what you guys are waiting for. It was so good, and it got me so um, jazzed to do more of the macrame. She's such an excellent teacher, um, but she really talked about how to space her beads and stuff along on this flat knot. Notice how I'm tying little beads here at the end to hold everything on, so those are my spacers. And now to get my beads where I want them, I'm just going to bring my beads up and I know what side I'm on because I'm looking right here. There's that little scallop where I ended, the knot where I ended. So that's where I need to make my loop. So scallop this way, and um, that's the way that you make your loop. So I'm going to bring up my bead, make the loop, and then tie the knot. Whoops. Sorry, I'm going to bring two up. Sorry, one and two. I was thinking about Brittany's design, so I was doing that in my head. But I'm going to bring two so the beads will be on opposite sides. Then I make my loop. Then I come under and I go up like so. Boom. And then I'll give myself some knots. and some knots. Okay, And I'll try and be even with these, so maybe I'll tie four knots in between. One, two, I think that's right. One, two, three, and then I need one more for the fourth. You also want to make your thread even on both sides. You can see that I so did not, <laughs> but that's okay. Then we'll bring another set down like this. The thing I like about this stitch where you have the two beads um, next to each other is it opens up and you can see some of the leather um, underneath which I think that's pretty awesome. So uh, it adds an extra intent of color. So whatever you want to do with your color with the 0.5 millimeter, we do carry it in some different colors. Natural would be great with this. Um, we also carry it in the Distress Gray, the Distress Violet. I love it all. So whatever you choose to, to do will look really nice. And Beth observed that this is different than putting the beads all on one side. That's right, Beth. So when you do them all on one side, the beads are counterbalanced uh, with each other going back and forth. So you don't see these big openings. And you can do that as well. That would also be a great variation on this theme. I'll do one. So there's that. Let me see if I have enough thread to do one more. Um, I always, when I'm in a rush and I do this on air, I don't check my thread lengths. So I'm getting dangerously low on this. Do you want to open this up just a little bit, Brandwin? Because I'm getting a little uh, long here. Perfect. Here we go, get this going. But if you do like I do, and you've cut a piece of thread that's woefully too short like this, it's okay. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. We're going to just add these, and I think you guys all have enough to add one more, because I wanna show you how I come around. So I'm gonna untie this. I'm gonna slide that bead up untie this, un uh, whoops, there we go, get back on there. And there's no need for a needle on the end of this sealon, though you could or you could stiffen it with glue or whatever you wanted to do. I do that a lot when I stiffen the ends of these threads with a zap. Um, I like that a lot. But I think I'm going to have just enough of this thread here. Make sure to come in if your thread or your stitches aren't looking as tight or as neatly as you need them to be. Just come in and fine tune it a little bit. There we go. So that looks all even down. So now it's time to, I'm going to make a couple more knots here if I can. and. Yeah, Emily's calling this playing thread chicken. It's so true, Em. That's hilarious. I would have had enough had I made this even, but 
I was so worried about the donuts, which are back in stock, by the way. I, that's right. I can teach and put product back in stock all at the same time. Don't ask me how I do it. I have no idea. Um, so I wasn't paying attention to my thread. But that's okay. If you're like watching TV or something, that happens. So you can see I've got my little bale or my little bale all set up. So now I'm going to free this um, tassel. And I'm going to bring everything, free it down here. And I'll bring everything around. And I don't know, did I do four? I did five on the other one. And actually, I think four is better. See that? Because then you've got a nice space up here at the top. So I think that four of these is fine. I went a little crazy and I did five over here. But whatever works for you. Then what you're going to do, this is how you set this up on the board. I'm going to get a piece of thread that's kind of extra hanging out here. And I'm going to make that little make that little loop. And I'm going to put this thread through and through. Tighten it up. Now see, this I really do need to pay attention at this part. See how I want these to be even, like this? And then I'm going to come in up top, connect this again to my board. Like this. Okay. Now I'm going to come down, and I'm just going to kind of try and hold this with my hands to tension it. Um, and what I'm going to do is, if I want to get rid of these, this macrame thread here, what I'll do is I'll come in, I'm going to get a little bit of my hypo cement and give it just a little bit of glue there and maybe just a touch there. So can you see where I put it? I'm controlling my glue, good glue management. I don't know if I can get the tip back in though. Come on, come on. I need to get a little closer to my eyes. Emily, why aren't you here so I can just hand you this glue? Brandwin's too busy taking photos. Come on now. There we go. Perfect. So now um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put one on top of the other like this. I'm going to kind of, well first let me get that to make sure you guys can see this. See the threads that I've got here? I'm actually going to clamp them so they don't move. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use a toothpick, my handy dandy toothpick. I know it's turned a little bit. Let me see if I can flatten it out so you guys can see this. And if I had added the right amount of thread, I wouldn't have to be going through this rigmarole, right? But since, again, I was being slapdash and not paying attention, I have to kind of go through this. I know that you guys do this too, right? We always just, you know, we're going along and then all of a sudden things go a little sideways. But that's okay. It's nothing you can't get out of. So there we go. I tighten that up and now I'm clipping it together. Okay. So now what am I going to do? I'm just going to add another piece of thread, right? So I'm going to cut myself, I don't know, another 18 inches. So I've got plenty. That's when I lay this down on the top and I make sure that we're even. I'm going to slide my new piece of thread underneath and I'm going to treat it just as if it was always there. I'm going to make sure that I'm even. There we go. I think I am. And I'm going to tie my first macrame knot is going to be a little awkward. So bear with me here. I'm going to go under all of this and pull it up through the loop. And it looks like I've got a whole bunch of random thread here, but I really don't. Good thread management. You're the boss of that thread. Get it right in there. And that first that first knot sits right where you want it. Done and done. There we go. Now we're just going to continue to macrame. And if I didn't have to add this extra thread, 
you would have just brought your threads from behind and done this anyway, just macrame it together. Okay, so coming in under all of this business here, grab that loop. You know what I could also do? I could also silk wrap this so that there's a silk wrap underneath the macrame. That would work too. That would look very nice. That top macrame knot always wants to be a little persnickety. I'm going to actually hold it a little closer to me, you guys. Sorry. Give this thread a good stern talking to. There we go. And tighten it up. Use your awl if you need to tighten up that first knot. There we go, and come in and then tighten. And so then what you do is you continue this macrame, 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 until you get right here. And so I'm going to show you, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to get my other one because I left it for you guys so I could show you here. So here is where I came in and around, and you can see it a little bit better on here. I've come around, I picked up these two strands, came around, and then this macrame is under, is over um, the tails and the beginning part of this loop. And you can see here, here's my fern. And so I, what I did um, earlier is I glued it really well just here um, with the um, hypo cement and uh, it's been sitting 24 hours. So this is ready um, to um, come in and just burn it, burn it away. I could use the trick that our buddy Ali does with the needle underneath and pulling the tails back through the, um, the macrame, but I'm gonna do this and burn it off today. But again, my glue has been glued and I have let it sit the 24 hours. So I'm really confident that it will be um, nice and sturdy. I'll come in from this side and also burn that thread away. And this is a little bouncy trick, the little trick here, that little heat the tip and bounce on the end of that Ceylon so that the little hairs, there's just a little bit, I think you guys can maybe see that, there's just a little bit of scraggle there, I'm gonna call it, that I don't like the looks of. So I'm just gonna tap it and tap it just to tamp those down so it looks nice and clean. There we go. And then these two ends, I could leave them if I wanted some kind of random leather to be out there. Um, if you knotted it and put some beads on, it would work. But I'm gonna get rid of it and I'm gonna use my cutters, my Zurons actually, to get right in there as treat them as if they were wire. But don't cut the macrame. That's the thing. Be very mindful about where you're cutting so that you just cut. There we go. So that's it. For this, now let's get back to Janice's piece. Let's refer to Janice. I'm going to show you, I, I'm going to show you real quick um, how uh, how this goes together here, so just bear with me just a second. But I wanted to show you what I did to embellish um, the bottom of the tassel. And I, I, I kind of like it. I like, um, I have always been one to want to embellish the tassel more and more. So what I did was I got my sharp needle, my sharps, my size 10, and I doubled over some Hana in pebble and I tied a knot at the end. And what I did was I went through with my knot, I just stitched through the body of the tassel. Where's the bigger tassel? Here we go. I just came in and I just took a stitch just like this and through, right? And so to secure it. Then I just started to put on size 10 seed beads, the ones that Janice has used in her piece here. And so I just started 
stitching and I put on enough so it went about halfway around the tassel um, and then I took a stitch so I'll show you how I do it I'm going to continue this going here so I don't know I, I put on two four six maybe I'll put them on and what I did was I, I kept putting them on I went about halfway and then I stuck my needle I went through and back and then came through again and then finished off to make them to make it a ring so all you really have to do to establish this first ring is get your needle on beads about halfway stitch it through to secure it run your needle back through those beads and then finish the rest of the loop it's pretty simple so now with the second row it's even easier because you have a base row to kind of stitch into so see how I put my beads on there I've come up and see there's a little bead next to it. I'm just gonna bring my needle in about two beads, stitch it, and it should be about the right length, and then stitch up. You could also, I suppose, if you wanted to, string a whole length of beads um, kind of knot it tightly and then wrap it around and stitch it in place. You could do that too. There's more than one way to tackle this situation. Um, but I think, the, especially with the Ceylon, it gives you a nice stiff um, wrap up here at the top of the tassel. So it's prime for embellishing. I'm going to go all the way. It looks like I need about three more beads in there. So I'm just going to do that. Three more and put them on. It's kind of fussy. Fussy work a little bit. You want to make that space maybe, I don't know. I'll try and stay in it. Three was one too many. I'll take that third one off. I hope you guys can see this okay. But, you know, it's kind of, as I say, a little fussy. So I'll just now go straight in. That's how I finish off that first row. Like this. And this way. There we go. And so I could add more rows if I wanted. Um, another row up here, but I kind of like these two rows. So now I need to figure out how the heck I'm going to tie this off. So I'm just going to go back in a square. Yep. There we go. And I could, now that I'm down here at the bottom of the tassel, I don't know, this isn't a show about stitching on the tassel head, but I can feel that you guys are all, then what happens? You could just, I don't know, let me stitch on a shadow bead here. See, I'm using that, if that silk wrap is nice and tight and even, you can use that as a base, except the tassel legs want to get in here like that. There's a whole art to tassel making, the French tassel making, the traditional tassels. And if you look, I saw a YouTube video a while back where they went to the last remaining tassel factory in France and saw the tassel makers doing this fancy stitching. But see here, I can go through. I might go through one more time. I don't know. Now I'm just showing off. Now I'm just being silly. But it's really, it's kind of fun. It's an extra way to embellish. Now if I wanted to put another shadow, I'll go through my 10 knots, or my 11 knots, sorry. And maybe I won't go right up next to it. Maybe I'll go through I don't know, there's still room in there, so I can get that through. Maybe That's I'll go through a couple more. Will it fit? I don't want to break those beads. But I could just go under if I can't fit through the bead. I'll just come and stitch out. There we go. That's all right. It doesn't have to go through the bead. And then I'll get another one. 
and I'll come up through. This is the last one I'll do. I won't continue to do this. I'll, I want to show you guys the necklace part of this. But you guys get the idea, right? If you know how to thread a needle and put the needle down and up in a piece, right? Look at how cool that looks, right? It's just a, I don't know, it's just such an interesting look. My mom will know this story. When I was a little girl, uh, my grand had a very good friend of hers. Her name was Dorothy. And my mom was very good friends with not only Dorothy, but her daughter as well. And Dorothy had, Dorothy I think was the number one um, influence on my style as a little girl. Um, she had things like these tassels hanging around her house, or she always had her dining table set with beautiful china and stuff like that. So Dorothy, your legacy, may you rest, lives on in my love of just fussy, silly, gump, San Francisco gump-like, uh, may that also rest, uh, touches on your work. So what other five-year-old would listen to their gran and her best friend chat while they watched, a, while they read Architectural Digest? That, that tells you a lot about me. Um, okay, so you can see, and I can just continue to stitch these around if I want, and I think it's pretty cool. And so now this tassel is ready to go on your armoire or on a project. It would look great as a purse charm. Wanda said those would be nice purse charms. It would. Um, it's gorgeous. So, um, so let me show you, though, how we would continue. I'm going to put this guy aside real quick, and I'm going to get the other tassel, bring that to the fore, um, move this down. So here's Janice's a ridge, okay, and here's the one I was working with earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo this because I want to just keep going forward with this. So let me just clip this. Uh, I know my thread snips are on this super messy table. Thank you for randoling. I'm just going to clip it. Hopefully I don't clip the leather. Take this off and then we'll, I want to show you. Come on. I was having trouble with those knots, but now they're tied so nicely they don't want to come off. Come on. Go away. There we are. So you can see this would be like Janice going here, okay, with this right here. And so you just continue until you're done, right? So I've done, I've gone, I've gone. I'm going to, I put a little bit of glue on this. I'm going to put a little bit more so I can eventually come in and thread burn those off. But I'm going to do that. Now, really, you guys, the world is your oyster. Um, I'll pull this down. So what Janice did is she started in with the Matubos. I'm going to cut these a little close. I don't want to thread burn them quite yet, but I want to get it out of my way. So the Matubos, here they are. Janice just put on a Matubo. And then she wove through the donut. So let me put on that Matubo. weave through the donut to the front and the back so you figure eight it right can you see that and then you tighten it down making sure it's not twisted like mine is there we go see that look how pretty that is and then I think she used another Matubo. Like so. And then another donut. So I know we're getting close, and I know you guys want to see the transition over to the um, the infinity stitch. So I'm just gonna do that for you real quick. It's not gonna take much time. You can see here, 
in the piece that Janice did, how she transitioned from, uh, there's the Matubo, the last Matubo, so let me put that on. And there are many ways to do this. We don't need a knot. We could um, do some macrame with it, right? Um, however you wanted to do it. But I'm going to get the, did we get some micro Verandoin? We didn't. Um, do we have some micro in there? I don't care what color it is. Um, and I'm going to ladder with that. Uh, I also want to show you while Brandwin's grabbing that. Um, uh, nope, that's not micro. Here, let me, let me look. We need some oh, micro. Micro is good. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I'll use Sable. That's good. Here's Micro and Sable. Janice used Micro, I think, in chocolate she used. But you can use anything you want. And this will give kind of an interesting contrast, I think, to the beads. So this will work. It doesn't, it, again, it, you could, I could do it with the Hana. I could do it with Kao, whatever. But since Janice called for it in the project, I wanted to show you how it looked. So what she used also for the infinity is she used the sharps. And the sharps, you know my love of the sharps needles. Um, the micro Ceylon is about as big of a thread as you want to go with those sharps. So what I'm doing is I'm waxing the tip of that. I'm getting it nice and tight. And I'm gonna needle, or nice and stiff rather, I'm going to needle the thread, so I place the eye of the needle on the thread. It can get a little persnickety, but there we go, it almost went through. So I'm going to slide that back, get the rest of that through there. I'm going to get it a little closer to my eye line of vision. Sorry you guys, bear with me here. I thought I could slide it right through without you guys doing it in front of the camera, so just bear with me here. Let me move that so you can look at those for a second, and I'll go ahead and needle this thread. There we go. There we are. Alrighty. So you want to measure out, um, you don't want so much thread that it's ridiculous or too, so little thread that you're having to, I don't know add thread all the time. I am doing like two wingspans. So this is a pretty long piece of thread. Maybe it's a little too long. Um, but I'm going to clip this away. There we go. Or uh, One wingspan. Maybe it's two half wingspans. And I'm going to show you this little trick. And especially since we're kind of under, under a time crunch, this is a fast way to add your thread. See how my tails are there, my needle is over here, right? I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna tie a knot. I have my threads here, my leather here. I'm just gonna bring everything around and through. And very carefully, I'll use my awl so you guys can kind of see this very carefully, tighten everything up, and that thread is securely looped in that knot. Can you see that? There we go. And this is really hidden. I don't even need to glue it. I could, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to thread burn that sucker right out of here. You can also clip it, but why not thread burn when you have the chance? See, I'm doing both at the same time. Can you see that there, how I have everything? And under tension, as I push the button of the thread burner, and then I just tap it, tap, tap, tap. Okay. So now I am set up for infinity stitch, and that was really super fast. So you can see, I'm just gonna connect this with my 
the lamp fur just like that. And there we go. I'll pull it up. I'll connect this one down here, maybe. I need to go a little bit further, so I'll do this up here. I can't really see that, so I'm going to connect it up there with the, with the tassel again. You would be working with probably a longer piece of thread than I am because I got this out of the scrap bin, but um, you know, you can add leather and stuff later too. It doesn't, you don't have to work with a super long piece. Okay, so that's just clipped down here at the bottom of the board. You can see that there. Okay, so now the infinity stitch, your good old, your friend and mine, the infinity stitch. And so what Janice started with here was she just laddered a few of these a dots. See how she went from, and if Janice were here, she would say, oh, I just did what I wanted to do, what, what I liked the looks of. So she probably liked the looks of these A-dots and started, then she went to the four-aughts, and then she went to a row of three eleven-aughts. And look at how really nice that row of eleven-aughts kind of looks like a strap of leather, like this, which I love. So I'm going to ladder a couple of the eights, a couple of fours, and a couple of the elevens, so you can see it, okay? And so that a dot, just like we would, uh, we just start laddering. I'm going to add my thread, my bead from one side, the left side for me. So I'm going to put my bead on. I'm going to go under the leather. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my um, spool here to um, to kind of open things up a little bit. So I put my bead on. I'm going under the leather. Again, we've got the Infinity Stitch Skill Builder for you guys, so you can really go over it. So I'm not going to go over it too in too much detail, but I want to show you how that just sits really nicely up against that knot. So I've gone under the leather, so I'm going to go over here, over the leather, making a figure eight, through the bead, catching my awl in the process. There we go. And like so. Now I go under. The leather. Let me just switch hands. And I'm going to add, I actually am going to stitch this first one before I add another bead. I'm going to stitch this first one through twice. That's the secret so it doesn't pop. And I will show you when we do a front view, I'll show you how the lariat looks on. Okay. I'm sorry, it's taking a little bit longer today. This was a longer broadcast, as Brandwin is fully aware. She's like, dude, I've been standing. But, um, but I really wanted to show you those tricks with that tassel, because this tassel is so, um, if you can't get it through, my hands don't want to grab it. I'm going to use my, the micro is just a little, heavy, so I just want to, there we go, I need a little help. And I also wanted to show you the um, the straightening iron too, that was kind of a fun thing. So we did a few different techniques today. There we go. Use that all to your advantage. Get that all in there and help it, help you pull that underneath. My thread's a little twisted, which is why I'm having a little, it's giving me a little sass. But it's not going to give me sass for long. There we go. So we're in. Okay. And so now we're ready just to ladder or infinity rather, not just ladder. Sorry, I hit the camera with that. That's why, you guys, I was being smug and cutting all this long thread. I'm having a little bit of thread management issues. So. It's my own fault for being so overly generous with my thread. I know Tammy Drennan's watching. Tammy always likes to say that she'll cut like three yards to ladder with, and I always laugh at her, but here I am doing it. There we go. And so see how really beautiful this infinity, oh, this long thread is going to kill me. Um, how beautiful this infinity looks. These A dots, I'll tell you, the list is all on bead shop, but it is the matte teal AB 8 aught. 
I mean, come on, three of my favorite words, mat, teal, and AB. All of those things are so good together in one bead. So there's this. Now, Janice went to the four aught, and the four aught, it's a Czech Picasso. It is the brown striped Picasso Czech bead, that same one that I used earlier in the macrame, the one that Ellen exclaimed over. I love this one too, and we've ha we have plenty. We've had these, you know, our Czech Picassos. Um, I just ordered some in. We've been kind of out of them. The thing about these Picasso beads is, or these aged Czech that we like to call them, they're in and out, and when the beads are out, sometimes we have to wait until the factories make this finish again. But I just ordered a whole bunch in, so you'll see those come in in about the next week or so. But if you like these A dots, grab them because they're they're not going to be around. Uh, they're not reorderable at all. Trust me on the, on that one. There we go. So see now we've got those. Now I'm going to add my 11s. And with the infinity stitch, as you're changing sizes with beads, your tension, just like if you were doing regular weaving, your tension on one side looks one way and your tension on the other side looks another way. So I really want to make sure that I'm paying attention to getting everything as neat as I can. There we go. Not being too slapdash there. There we go. And if you don't have an awl, just grab one. They are really, um, you've seen Emily uses them all the time. She's the one who brought them over here to beadshop.com. They're so indispensable. So now we'll put our row of three 11 knots. And these 11 knots, I think, are just gorge. They're really, it's the tan brown or brown tan, uh, Picasso brown tan matte. 11 knot. The 11 knots are a little persnickety. Come on. But laddering with this KO, um, not this KO, sorry, laddering with this Ceylon um, will really make this a piece for the ages. It's a little um, unwieldy sometimes if your thread gets twisted like mine is. But It looks pretty nice, and I'll do one more. Bring it under. And you could, you know, do a pattern with these. You don't have to do them so singly like Janice did um, in her piece. But however it works for you. Bring this around. We'll do one more pass. Okay. Bring it through. Get that finger underneath there. Get everything established and get everything so it's not twisty or anything here. Take that moment to make sure that's right. And then come through on the top and try not to split your threads as you're going back. So I try and scrape the top of the bead hole um, with my needle. There we go. That one's not twisted, so there we go. I'm getting the hang of it. And tighten it up. So again, see how that end isn't tight? And I've already tightened it up here to my right, so I'm going to get my all, pull that extra thread, tighten it, pull one at a time, there we go, and tighten it in. Great. Okay. And Leslie's saying they have the same look as Picture Jasper. That is so true. Where is my dish of those? Here they are. You can see with the whole dish of these little beauties, aren't they good? They're really, really nice. So you can just continue on, continue, continue, continue. So let's examine Janice's piece here. Let me get rid of these guys here, just real quick. But again, someone observed earlier, I can't remember who it was, who was saying, you know what, instead of laddering, I'm just gonna string. And by all means, that would be a great way to handle this um, design as well. Let me undo this so we can see this that we've got going on here, and I've got this going on here. 
So you can see what JP did was she did a much longer um, beaded flat knot here. Then we use that little connection and then she just continued on with these 11 knots. In the center, she did, repeated that um, donut and matubo look and then she just mirrored everything on the other end. And on the, the other end, when you add this, what I would do is I'd come back down, I'd come through here with all of my, um, uh, with all of my threads, and I would just kind of come through and maybe bring it back up and knot it off up here. Um, or you could silk wrap, you could get all of your ends under a silk wrap or a bit of macrame under there as well. So it just depends on how you want to do it. You could also start both ends and have them meet somewhere in the middle. And it actually is my guess. I would bet you, again, dollars to donuts, that might have been what Janice did. Though I can't tell. She's so good, I can't tell where her leather ended. So you could do that and you could like tie it together or silk wrap it together or something all the way up here too. So however you want to connect it up um, will work out just fine. I did want to show you, uh, speaking of stringing, these are the um, some more of the new ones that we've got in and I, the name is escaping me for the moment. I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab the name real quick. Bear bear with me. I just love them. It's these are an eight uh, six millimeter, I think. They're called um, the brown line. They're eight millimeter, sorry. They're brown line agate. Um, and they come about 48 beads to a strand here. And so what I was thinking with my piece when I was making it, and I'm going to get rid of this extra here so we can actually see it. I'm going to thread burn this real quick here. Um, and Ellen said, on the notes on the photo, I thought I read she used a single long piece of leather. You know what? I guess maybe I should read the notes. Where did she? Oh, the final knot. Can you see where the final knot is? It's right the final knot here. So she came around, she did, she came underneath and around and back and she knotted everything off here. That's where the final knot is. So good one, JP, for hiding that. I'll come in and I'll thread burn this off. I like the thread burner for singeing. I just do, I'm so glad we have it back in because that was always my, um, my choice for finishing these off instead of cutting them real close. There we go. And let me cut off this piece of um, leather there. So what I did with this, with these green line or brown line um, eight millimeters, what I did was I kind of mimicked this donut weave in here and I brought it back through and I macrameed. And then I started to just put the beads on and knot them. So I have a few here. And you can see they fit. And I'm sorry this is going so long, you guys. But there's so much to show you with this epic, these epic beads. But this will be the last thing and then we'll sign off. I know that you guys have things to do, places to go, beads to buy, lunch to eat, lunch to eat right, Brent? Brennan's all <laughs> lunch to eat. So true. I've got a mom to meet too. My mom's on her way here. So here's the knot, here's the bead, and then it's just an overhand knot, just like I did with just a regular pearl knot. And you can use your awl to help you. Pull that knot up and tighten. You could put a seed bead in between instead of a knot. So whatever, whatever you like. But then what I thought with the tassel that I made, remember how I mentioned that you could make this tassel so it could go on and off your piece. So I was thinking 
that you could string a long necklace. So see how that would fit there? Then you'd continue. So you'd have this little portion. And then here, where this is, you could continue using the donuts and things like this. And your, you know, you can continue to ladder or put in your big barrels and stuff like that there. So this could be just a cool long necklace this way. So it's a really, um, it's a really cool, I think, interesting way to do this. And you can also just continue down, you know, using these guys here. These stripes, I mean, take, they're just gorge. I really, really love them. And they knot up really beautifully on that 0.5 millimeter leather, which is great. So, um, so there it is, you guys. Um, and it, this piece, you know, what I would do is, this is a piece, you know, you can make Janice's design bead for bead. Very easy, very simple. Um, but this is also a good piece to get your pieces in and let them kind of marinate on your bead board. Um, I was doing a design, a, a necklace design, and I was working on it, and I kind of do a little bit kind of every day, I kind of come in and do a little bit of work on it so that I'm not so much under the pressure of, oh my gosh, you know, what decision am I going to make or whatever. So something like this, again, bead for bead for Janice's, perfect. Or get your components and just do it in stages. And if you tackle it a few nights a week or a couple of weekend days, you'll have your piece done before you, before you know it. And I know that you want to see me uh, the length of this lariat, so we'll move the camera around. Um, you'll see how truly messy I have made this table. Um, but in the uh, notes, in the episode notes, Drea will have some nice detail about this, and I'll, we'll have a couple of nice finished photos of it. I'm kind of in love with this embellished tassel top, so I'll finish it off um, and we'll do some photos of it so you guys can see it. Um, but yeah, let's let's bring this show the show to an end. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun designing. These beads I think are so gorgeous. And if you're watching this later, um, I did put in some of the agate beads are back in. The discs are back in. Um, you know, as Janice's mom, Lydia, liked to say, this isn't a museum. So beads go in and out pretty quickly around here. But I did want to say, if we're out, put yourself on that notification list and we'll get things back in. Um, we try and get them back in as fast as we can. Kimono cord, I'm looking at you right? It'll be in so soon. I'm just waiting to get the notification that it shipped because if I put them in too soon and you guys have ordered it, you're like, where am I, where's my stuff? So it's a balancing act for sure. So don't worry. We will uh, get that back in if you're watching this later and we're out of it. Okay, let me show you the length on this piece. I'm going to take off um, my bib. I don't know if you guys have made your bib necklaces yet, but I, I adore them. I've been wearing this one a lot. This is the Cleopatra one. We have plenty of these guys um, in stock right now. This is the Lapis one, but we also have them in um, the Turquoise and in, I think it's the uh, Impression Jasper as well. So it's pretty good. Um, let me measure this one before we sign off so you know how long it is. What I like to say, how long it is door to door. So it's from, I'm going to do it from the tip of that bead all the way down. It's about 40 inches, this lariat, okay? And just depending on how long you want the piece to be, let me get everything smoothed out here, um, just around your neck like this, and just like a scarf, like this. I think that's great. If you've made it longer, you can wrap it a couple of times around, 
or um, the other way I like wearing the lariat is if the lariat's this way and you come through, it need to be a little bit longer, but you can slide it through this way and have the ends dangle down. So it just depends on what, uh, what it is uh, you like and how long you wanna make this piece. But 40 inches will kind of sit like this and I think it looks really nice. So I guess we've come to the end of another Bead Shop Live. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you opened your newsletters earlier, and I sincerely hope that you did, um, we did a no minimum discount today for you guys. So if you, today is the 12th of June, Wednesday, the 12th of June, 2019. If you're shopping today and you put the code Lariat20, in your coupon code box we'll take 20 percent off your total i mean that's a store wide so uh it's good on everything um it's good until midnight tonight if you are watching this later and you have not gotten our newsletters i urge you to jump over to beadshop.com we keep all of your information private we don't lend it give it away sell it anything like that it stays with us and that's the best way uh, for you to get all of our deals, our discounts, all kinds of fun stuff. We do giveaways, all kinds of great things through the newsletter. And speaking of the newsletter, do watch your newsletter. Um, we are doing a couple of really exciting things here at beadshop.com. We are having, Karen's been working very hard on our website redesign. If you open your newsletters, you'll see that we're already using our new logo in our newsletters. And next week on Bead Shop Live, Karen will be with me and we're gonna be going over the steps of our wonderful new website so you guys will be prepared. Um, it's gonna launch the last week of June. Um, this Friday, uh, Emily's gonna be here with me and we're gonna do Free Tip Friday. We have a wonderful project with Emily. And then on Saturday, again, that's our open studio day. So more information on the homepage or there's also more information um, listed in the website or in the newsletter as well. So uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I know we went a little late today, um, but I think you learned a lot of great stuff. Have a great week and I'll see you here Friday with Emily for Free Tip Friday. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.